This is Montana This Morning. A large truck stop being built over here has the folks living over here in the small community of Ramsey ready to put up a big fight. Plus an update on the Elmo 2 fire raging north of Missoula that officials say is moving fast and running hard. Good morning, Southwest Montana. 6.30 on this Tuesday. It looks a little cloudy. That's haze, actually. That's no. a smoke from the fires in the area. And That's then, what wow. saying, yeah. that kind of goes great into this red flag warning that yeah. we're is in effect right now. Uh, mm -hmm. It all leads into all of that. Uh, yeah. The fact that it was a cloudy overnight as well, mm -hmm. super warm temperatures outside right now. Take a look at those uh, yeah. conditions. This is current conditions out there. 76 wow. in Livingston, 63 in Breezy in West Yellowstone, 64 in Dillon, uh, 58. Uh, one of the cooler spots is uh, Butte right now. That's a really warm temperature. As far as your planner for today, warming up into the uh, upper 80s for the Bozeman area with some breezy conditions as well this afternoon. We could see gusty winds 30 to 35 miles an hour around southwest Montana. Uh, red flag warnings, as Ashley uh, mentioned. We will talk more about that coming up in just a couple minutes. Thank you, Chet. Well, after a legal setback, residents of a small community of Ramsey near Butte are reviewing uh, and renew sorry, renewing their fight against the proposed truck stop moving next to the small community. The sound of a rooster is more common than the sound of a passing car in this quiet community of Ramsey, just west of Butte. But if a large truck stop ends up being built right next door, many in this community believe they're going to hear a lot of terrible sounds. We don't even like to think about what would happen. <laughs> no, it, it, would be, it would be bad. You would be noisy. Uh, it'll change everything about the village. Love's travel stop recently received approval from the Butte Silver Bow Zoning Board to build the truck stop east of the isolated village of about 40 homes off Interstate 90. Residents have been objecting to this project since it was first proposed five years ago. It's the traffic, it's the uh, smell of the diesel, the diesel engines running all night in the winter time, it's the bar casino traffic that you're going to have, the light, you will now be looking out at, you know, neon lights all night long. It's, it's everything about it, this says this should not happen here. Residents fear the truck stop will be a danger to the community by the increased truck traffic and people passing through. And there's going to be transients and, and uh, prostitution and, and uh, fumes, pollution, light pollution, and uh, it'll be terrible. Coincidentally, this historic town was built for isolation. In 1916, the DuPont Company built it to manufacture dynamite. Well, today, this little village is dealing with another explosive situation. Rule number one, you never give up. Rule number two, you don't give up. You keep fighting it. When reached for comment about these concerns, Love's Communication Department replied with this written statement. Our stores are managed and employed by local community members who are dedicated to serving their neighbors. Loves looks forward to serving Ramsey and County residents along with drivers traveling on Interstate 90. We'll move switching gears here. The fire has turned and is running hard. That's what Lake County Sheriff Don Bell told MTN News Monday afternoon after the Elmo fire took off near Dayton, forcing mm -hmm. dozens of homes to evacuate, destroying one structure and shutting down the highway. That road, Highway 93 between Elmo and Dayton, is still closed this morning as smoke is impacting visibility. Drivers are asked to please use Highway 35 on the eastern side of Flathead Lake. Meanwhile, the Lake Mary Ronan corridor has been evacuated, including the Chief Cliff Estates, which were in the most danger from the fast moving fire. MT and Sean Wells was in Elmo yesterday evening and has the latest report. The Elmo fire exploded Monday afternoon as heavy winds started pushing that fire east. Some residents were forced to evacuate their homes immediately. We got up and checked this morning and it was still up on the hillside and uh, it has run 
pretty significantly in the in the last few hours. Jeremy Gibbs lives in Dayton on Black Lake Road off Highway 93. Changing winds and fast moving fire forced his family and neighbors to evacuate Monday afternoon. I just hope all our uh, our neighbors were able to get out and uh, get all the very important things out um, because this is blown up. It's turning turning dire. Northern Rockies Team 7 Public Information Officer Sarah Rouse says conditions changed rapidly Monday afternoon. This afternoon we had some winds come out of the west pushing the fire east um, and northeast uh, from what we saw yesterday and uh, along with those winds we were unable to have our aircraft up at that time so it just sort of created this perfect culmination for uh, some pretty uh, active fire. Rouse says fire crews are attacking the fire's edge utilizing aircraft as the number of personnel working on the fire continues to grow. As of yesterday evening we had 293. Um, again there are more resources rolling in throughout the day so that number will uh, climb up tomorrow morning. Jeremy has lived in Dayton since 2017. He's never seen a wildfire this close to home. Uh, I've never seen it burn over here. Um, I've been in close proximity to other wildfires that have burned uh, in recent years, but never near my residence. Be sure to check kpax.com for continuous updates on the Elmo fire. In Elmo, Sean Wells, MTA News. Over the past few days, Montana, especially western Montana, has experienced a jump in wildfires. The Montana DNRC reports that over the last seven days alone, firefighters statewide have responded to 107. That brings this year's total to 946 fires. And those fires have burned almost 22,000 acres altogether. Most of those were fires that were caused by humans. Now it's important to note that this report does not include the Moose Fire, which is burning over in Idaho but is still impacting western Montana. And now that wildfire season has arrived, the coverage doesn't stop with this newscast. You can head over to KBZK or KXLF.com slash apps and download our app to watch on all your devices and stay up to date on the wildfires. There is some welcome news for drivers. Gas prices continue to fall nationwide. According to AAA, the national average is around $4.25 a gallon. Glad that number is going down. Thank That's goodness. down more than 60 cents from a month ago. Newsy's Kat Sandoval explains how the price drop at the pump can open the doors to more relief for consumers. In an economy where it seems like everything just keeps costing more and more, Gas prices are on their way down nationwide. I love it. I can deal with that price. <laughs> it beats paying that four ninety nine, that four ninety nine, or something you had at one time. In Richmond, Virginia, Buddy Garrison is thrilled that gas dropped to under four dollars a gallon, and he's not alone. Three sixty two for gas, pretty cheap. <laughs> I think I did good today. I'm almost at a full tank. AAA says the price of gas has fallen every day since we hit a national average of $5 a gallon in June. They predict gas averages will continue to drop as demand for crude oil decreases. And that's welcome news because of the recent gross domestic product report that shows the U.S. economy in a second straight quarterly decline, possibly signaling a recession. I'm a busy person, so... All of my money goes into gas, <laughs> basically. <laughs> but this is this is really good right now to compare to, you know, weeks and months ago. It was really bad. Economist expert Timothy Sullivan says declining gas prices can lead to price drops in other areas like groceries, but it might take months to see an impact. Energy prices and gas prices and, you know, like trucking and distribution, are sort of um, a core cost of um, running the system. Uh, it, it will have an effect. Uh, so falling gas prices are definitely good, are good for consumers. The Biden administration jumped on the good news on gasoline and took credit for it with tweets like this and this. Earlier this year, Biden blamed high gas prices on Putin's price hike stemming from Russia's war in Ukraine. Market analysts say it's complex. We've been working really hard to bring the price down. Four months ago, I gave an order to release one million barrels of oil per day, a day, 
for our nation from our nation's strategic petroleum reserve. The release of more oil barrels could have kept prices low, but others like Republican Senator John Barrasso argue that the demand is down, not just because of Joe Biden. The demand is down because people can't afford to fill their tank with gasoline. Politics aside, moms like Kan Jang from Baltimore just want to enjoy what's left of summer. I think one of the big things we like to do is go explore different state parks in Maryland. So this really gives us more options to drive farther and go explore more with our little girl. But you can't please everyone. If we're ever going to solve the fossil fuel problem, we need gas prices to go way higher like they are in Europe so that we can actually push people towards more electric cars and hybrids. Uh, when gas prices go down, people buy huge cars. And when gas prices go way high, we buy more fuel-efficient cars. Kat Sandoval, Newsy, Chicago.